Okay, the reason that I chose stocks over Forex is very, very simple. Forex is quite volatile and that's fine. I love volatility because you can buy low and sell high. But the problem that I have with it is that there is no upward bias. There is no bias. There is no bias. Is it down? Is it up? It depends on all the other countries, you know, in the foreign exchange. Whereas stocks, what you have is you have an inherent upward bias because most people believe that you buy stocks. Right? They don't necessarily short stocks. Some people do, but the majority, they have a belief that it's a buy and hold and long term. And don't forget that since the inception of the stock market, it has grown an average of around 6.9 to 7% a year. In the States, even more, right? So it has an upward bias. So that's one thing to know. And that's why the value cost averaging strategy is such a good one because, you know, even if something goes down, we know that in the end, there's a very good likelihood that it is going to turn as you get back to the bull market. You also know that you know, the bear market might be on average maybe two years, but you know that the average bull market is much longer, three, four, five years. So that's one thing. You've got to think, what am I actually investing in? I'm investing in a company that makes revenue, that makes profit. So therefore, you can look at fundamentals. And the challenge that I have with a Forex is that let's say I'm buying something, what are the real fundamentals? I mean, this is just my opinion, but I can actually look at a company and I can look at its revenue, big deal, but I can actually look at is the profit growing year on year? I can look at five years or more of history and I can know whether the earnings per share, the EPS, has grown over the last five years or not. I can actually see that. So this is called fundamental analysis. The fundamental analysis shows you which company to invest into. It could show you whether a company has debt or not debt. And funnily enough, we want a company that actually has debt, which is crazy in a way, but we want a company because it means that the management of that company is using all the resources it has at its disposal in order to generate more sales, right? So company A and company B, if company A wants to organically grow uh, by going into another country, it's gonna fail against company B because company B says, well, we don't wanna go slowly and organically. We wanna get there first, have first mover advantage and conquer it before company go goes in. So they go to the bank, they get money, now they have debt, now they go in, they do marketing, sales, advertising, etc. First move advantage, couple of years later, company A trundles along, goes da da. Company B goes, duh, duh, what? We're already number one and you don't have a chance. So debt is actually something that a company should have. You might disagree, I mean, but, 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 but that's certainly what, what I found. And there's things like earning surprises. You know, there's things that you, can, that you can look for in order to see whether this is a company that generally outperforms or positively surprises. Uh, the market or underperforms and has negative earning surprises. Um, there's the profits, you know, the profits themselves, are they growing? We said between 15 and 30% a year, is that possible? What about profit margins? Are they growing, are they falling? And if they have big margins, you know what that means, right? It means that if a new competitor comes in, guess what they can do? They can quickly drop their margins, make everything cheaper, and they'll suffer a little bit, but suddenly their competitor doesn't have a chance, they're blown out, and then when they have a monopoly again, they can increase that. So there's all these kind of things that I can do with stocks. I can actually, for example, know whether I like a product or not, right? I love this product, it's, it's the best in breed, I love using it, so you wanna then buy the company because you can, you love the product, you know, Tesla. People love Tesla, honestly. My friend Binesh, he loves his Tesla, you know, we're sitting in this, I think, why do they keep going on about their Tesla? And then, yeah, he took me for a drive, yeah, okay, fine, I get it. But I mean, still. And, and, and so, so, so he's the kind of person that then says, well, I'm then gonna buy the public company, especially if the price drops, right? If the price drops, then it's a discount on something that used to be here. We know we have an upward bias. We know the sales are good. We know the profits are good, blah, 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 blah. Can you see that the fundamental side of things is something that I personally prefer over Forex. Now you might not, you might say, well, I like you know, exchange rates and all of this kind of stuff and you, can, and, and you might like the fluctuation. You might like to do all of that. But for me, it definitely is stocks because you can do the fundamentals and then you can do the technical analysis and the technical analysis, the short-term movement or the, the short-term observation 
of that stock price and that will tell you when to get in. So the fundamentals is uh, which company or what company I want to buy and the technical analysis shows me I don't want to get in at 30, I don't want to get at 25, I want to get in at 20, right? So I'm going to wait until it gets down there and that's when I get in. And that tells you when to buy this company. Now think about this, I can even short companies make money going down. How? By not having a list of the fundamentally great companies, but the list of the fundamentally terrible companies. No one does this. We do this, but no one else that I know do it. There's always like the best industry, you know, which one's the best sector, which one's the stock, you know, the journalists say, so Mr. De Maria, what do you think? Which ones are the stocks that are going to go up the most? Or what's the sector that's going to go up the most? And it's just like they're buying into this thing that you can only make money going up. What about down? Get the fundamentally worst companies, you know, where the margins are shrinking, the debt is growing, they can't service the debt anymore, you know, like some countries. Um, where, where, where the earnings per share are going down and down and down and down and they're the ones that you want to short. And then you don't want to do that at 25, not at uh, 20, 25, you want to do that at $30. You want to do that at the high. You know, if you want to buy something low, you want to basically sell short as high as possible. I would love to know what you think. Do you prefer foreign exchange trading? And if so, tell me why. Please comment below and let's get a dialogue started because I would love to be proven wrong. I love stocks, you love forex, let me know. Or do you agree? Maybe you love stocks as well. Let me know below in the comment section.